J.B. Pritzker has taken over as governor and things have changed at the State House. We'll talk about it next on Capitol View. Welcome to Capital View, the program where we talk about state issues, sometimes federal issues, and how they just might affect your life. I'm Bernie Schoenberg from the State Journal Register. We have a new governor. We have people here to talk about it. <laughs> it this should be fun. Adriana Petrelli is State House Bureau Chief for the Chicago Daily Law Bulletin. Welcome back. Thank you, Bernie. And Jacqueline Driscoll is a reporter here in Springfield for NPR Illinois. Welcome mm -hmm. back to you. Thank you. So, the governor gave a speech. There were Democrats and Republicans sitting on stage at the Bank of Springfield Center, the old Prairie Capital Convention Center. Uh, Governor Pritzker took the oath of office, talked about lots of progressive ideas, also talked about cooperation. Uh, he said with Governor Rauner and his wife among the Republicans sitting on stage, we're going to balance the budget, but not on the backs of the starving, the sick, and the suffering. Perhaps he was talking about the budget impasse. I'm not sure, but uh, he didn't exactly say. Anyway, Jacqueline, your thoughts on uh, kind of what, what we saw and the pro professed new day of optimism? <laughs> I would say that it was a very jubilant day for Democrats especially, um, but I also spoke with a couple Republicans in the room and it was still a, a, an exciting feeling that I was getting from them. It was kind of m moving on to something new. Um, they do obviously have some concerns about some of uh, now Governor Pritzker's ideas. Uh, income tax, the graduated income tax proposals, as well as raising the minimum wage to $15 that we heard in his speech. Um, Which is supposed to come in stages, but we right. don't, haven't seen a bill yet. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Governor Rauner vetoed a measure because uh, uh, giving the reason that you know this would be bad for small businesses, that was some, some of the similar feelings in the room that I got. But overall, it seemed to be a pretty exciting day. <laughs> right, Adriana? Yeah, no, I agree. I heard everyone seemed pretty positive. Um, you know, there weren't, there wasn't a lot of backlash um, from his speech, even from a lot of Republicans just at the state level. Everyone just seemed like it was a celebratory day. They were pretty excited. Um, like you said, there were numerous Republicans on stage, including go former Governor Rauner and his wife. And like you said, was Pritzker kind of calling him out? Maybe. I know he said he will balance the budget and that takes leadership, that abandoned single-minded, arrogant notions. I mean, <laughs> I don't know, maybe he wasn't talking about Rauner, but other than that, I mean, he, he started with a bang. He started with, this is what I want to do, this is how we're going to do it, and he started off on the right foot. Right. Well, among, among some of the things that now Governor Pritzker talked about, legalizing marijuana, which we think will happen reasonably soon, he said he believes in science, and therefore he will have the state, I guess you can do this as the governor, join the U.S. Climate Alliance, which follows the Paris Accords, which the United States has dropped out of since President Trump is there. But we don't know exactly the effects that will have on use of fossil fuels or effects on coal-fired plants, that kind of thing, but we will see where that goes. He talked about the need for a capital plan, uh, and, and obviously there will be a need to raise revenue for that. Um, he, did, he did mention, uh, Something there has been an ongoing conflict, of course, between Governor Ron or there was the former governor, who never reached a contract agreement after the contract with AFSME, the largest state employee union, mm -hmm. uh, uh, ended in the middle of 2015. Uh, the way Governor uh, Pritzker put it, I won't hollow out the functions of government to achieve an ideological agenda. I won't make government the enemy and government employees the scapegoats. Uh, so. Clearly, he's he is trying to be on the side of employees as opposed and and unions, where Governor Rauner uh, really had a philosophical idea that that government unions uh, are almost immoral because they help people get elected, then they sit across the bargaining table and negotiate their benefits and wages, and and that sh you know in the private sector you'd go to jail. I heard Governor Rauner say more than once as a candidate and as governor, so we clearly have a new and different day. And Governor Pritzker also talked about a downstate renaissance, and he wants to bring uh, job training in appropriate ways. He actually went to Belleville uh, uh, to a community college there in his first week, a couple of days after the election, to uh, talk about job training and tell his Department of Commerce to study where, where to best use the funds. So uh, things are going in, an odd, an, in a very different direction on certain issues. 
Uh, just on the first day, uh, Jacqueline, perhaps uh, the, the governor had a, an event in his office where he, um, one of the things he did, he signed an executive order saying that women applying for state jobs can no longer be asked their previous salaries. That was just one of the pro-labor things. That's supposed to help women um, get equal pay for equal work because so many come into the work, into a new job having been paid less, perhaps, uh, mm -hmm. as Governor Pritzker said, in past jobs. So that, again, uh, that's the, uh, uh, that there were legislators there who had passed legislation for that in the past that had been vetoed by Governor Honor. Mm -hmm. Governor Pritzker says, this is just going to be our policy. Mm -hmm. And it's also, I guess, the idea is it would also help minorities, too, ha who have been systematically underpaid. Mm -hmm. um, so it's stopping kind of that systematic issue that mm -hmm. we've seen for women and um, minorities. So it's definitely a different tone, as you've mentioned. And you were at the press conference. I didn't get the pleasure of being there, but I got to read all about it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it was. it's it's already very different. Yeah, it it already well, feels like a brand new day. Well, one of, one of the other things he did was uh, he said, because since there, the contract ended, Governor Rauner had not paid newer employees at the state who are unionized, their step increases that they're supposed to get mm, to help yeah. them move mm -hmm. forward. He, he didn't promise back pay yet. He said that's still being worked out. But he said going forward from now on, you're getting your, your uh, mm -hmm. their step increases. So that should be raises to some people. Now, he was asked how much that will cost, and he, and he didn't say. So what we have some say. questions about, about you know, how costly will the promises that he is starting to try to keep cost the state. Right. That still owes more than $7 billion in back bills. Exactly. And um, I reached out to his spokesperson even, and she said it's going to take a few weeks to see, you know, crunch some numbers but it looks like it affected about 20,000 state employees. So you can only imagine how much money that's going to be. Yeah, I've heard, uh, and maybe this is the back pay part, mm -hmm. something I heard $400 million, et cetera, et cetera. Of course, we have a, a state budget that is in the, what, $36 billion mm -hmm. range. I'm, I should know this, but it's, <laughs> it's something in that regard. Um, but yeah, he, he was asked that, um, yeah, and he, he didn't, immediately have an answer. Of course, it was his first day, and you know he had a lot of people behind him, various legislators who have been pushing for things. You had unions putting out statements saying, you know, we've seen more friendliness towards union labor in one day of the Pritzker administration than four years of the Rauner administration. Of course, that was a, it was a pitched battle, and so that's why uh, things look so much uh, like a, a new day. Um, he also, within the first week, um, went to Chicago, where gun control is much more popular than it is in areas downstate. And by uh, late in the week, he signed a bill that was held over from the previous administration mm -hmm. about um, um, having, it, I, I, mean, I don't think it's licensing of gun dealers, but it's certification of gun dealers. In other words, mm -hmm. state law that will over, kind of tell those dealers that they have to, Adrian, I think you're up on this, uh, have installed cameras and have training for their employees. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's more regulation that people who say they are gun advocates don't like, but Prisker says, you know, we've got to quit making war zones out of our neighborhoods and movie theaters, et cetera. Right, so Pritzker says that this is going to um, have less gun violence. Another one of the requirements in this was there has to be an online system, basically. So when someone buys a gun, it goes into the system or they buy ammo there. And that system will basically be used by every gun dealer in the state. So we can see if someone's buying a lot of guns for some reason and kind of that'll raise a red flag. But people who own these gun shops, especially ones that are smaller, are kind of concerned. All of this combined is going to cost about $1,500, which might not seem like a lot, but for those smaller shops, that is a big chunk of their money. Um, I talked to someone from the Illinois State Rifle Association today. They released a statement that they actually wanted to take this to court. Um, to try to so, block it right, as, and, as Second Amendment violation, right, I'm assuming. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and so I asked if they had taken any steps toward that, and there's nothing in writing yet, but um, it's something that they definitely are pushing 
toward, and there are a lot of other gun advocates that are probably going to be on board with them. So I think it's important to note too: um, the federal government already licenses our, our gun shops and gun dealers. So um, people who are opposed to this particular piece of legislation say it's not needed. Um, we already have this at the federal level. Those who l wanted this piece of legislation to pass say the federal government is too big. They have too many people. We need to have more regulation here within the state to make sure that we do have the good players in this arena. Yeah, I think there's a, a real big difference just regionally in Illinois, uh, downstate mm -hmm. versus northeastern Illinois in particular, Chicago and the suburbs, where you know Illinois was, I think, the last state to get concealed carry when it became mm -hmm. federal law, and it just had to happen. Uh, but up until then, you know, the city of Chicago, you couldn't, for a long time, you couldn't even own, own a, a gun legally. Uh, and of course, people who are Second Amendment gun rights advocates in central Illinois who look in Chicago say, well, the bad guys have guns, so it's an ongoing uh, situation, but... I think just the word gun has a very different connotation when you say yeah. it in Chicago and then when you say it downstate. Um, yeah, there's just not a lot of different people in the, in the center of the city, I don't think, spend their weekends, you know, like Governor Rauner did, going out to a nearby farm and going hunting with mm -hmm. friends, whereas hunting is such a big thing here mm -hmm. that I know, I guess it's Cass County, they let out schools on the first day of deer hunting season. Uh, so Green it's County a very, does as well. It's a, it's a very different thing. And it was interesting, uh, during the campaign, uh, there were times that I heard Governor Rauner speaking about J.B. Pritzker. Uh, when Rauner would talk to, like, the voice of Southern Illinois Station, WJPF in, in Carterville, I think it is, you know, he would say, that, that Pritzker, he's a gun grabber, you know, of mm -hmm. the, that, that kind of uh, talk, although Rauner was also trying to, you know, attract votes up in the suburbs, too, which he clearly did not because somehow these things get around. But it's such, such a wide difference. Um, and, but... Uh, you know what Pritzker this this legislation actually was held over from the mm -hmm. last leg legislation mm -hmm. uh, or last legislature which is odd I, ha I don't recall that happening before I'm sure it has right. but one legislature passed the bill and they held it so that Pritzker could sign it so it's just a an interesting way to move forward exactly yeah so he, you know he vetoed a similar bill previously and so they they knew he's going to veto something again so um, Senate President John Cullerton just took upon himself held it for a little bit and now they're they're good. They've so. got it. Very interesting. Um, I would like to discuss kind of the Republican response to the new situation. So uh, Governor Pritzker comes in in what had turned into a, kind of a blue wave year in Illinois. So in the House there's now extraordinary majorities of Democrats both in the House and the Senate plus the Democratic governor. So you have in the House 74 Democrats, 44 Republicans. In the Senate it's 40 Democrats, 19 Republicans. Mm -hmm. These are giant majorities. They are veto-proof majorities, not that uh, this governor is likely to veto a lot of things the Democratic legislature does. We'll find out. Um, but there have been a couple of different tacks being taken by Republicans to try to react to this. Um, one of them is uh, Tim Schneider remains the chairman of the state Republican Party. He's from, I think, the Barrington area up in uh, the Chicago suburbs. He was put into that position even I think he would say, I know the governor, former Governor Rauner said that he was Rauner's guy. He was on the Cook County board. He owns a golf course and I think some car, wa a car wash or car washes. Uh, but he put out a statement on Inauguration Day as Just this minutes. stuff was happening. Mm -hmm. uh, it's clear that Gov Governor Pritzker's agenda will be the same agenda that has dragged our state down for decades. Borrow, tax, spend, repeat. Over the course of the election, and again today, Pritzker promised billions of dollars in new spending program, programs and regulations, all of which our state cannot afford, which was a very strong statement and probably the most negative statement of the mm -hmm. day that you heard from m most places, except maybe the six demonstrators outside who said no new taxes, mm -hmm. uh, who <laughs> came up from Southern <laughs> Illinois. Uh, very small demonstration. There really wasn't a lot of uh, bad. But then the legislative leaders themselves uh, Jim Durkin, who leads Republicans in the House, Bill Brady, the state senator from Bloomington, who leads Republicans in the Senate. They have been to Pritzker's home in Chicago for dinner mm -hmm. with the other leaders. They were saying things like, we know we're in a minority, but we're going to try to cooperate. So uh, who speaks for the Republican Party these days, I guess, is a question. I mean, that is a good question. I think that from their perspective, they know they have a Republican, or pardon me, a Democratic governor. They know that Democrats are controlling both chambers, and they know they don't really stand a chance. So almost what's the point of fighting? What's the point of starting this 
out on the wrong foot and making enemies. They kind of just know that they have to work together. So it is a good question. Do we have any true, true Republicans who are going to keep fighting for the Republican Party, or do we have lawmakers who kind of know that they just have to go to the middle because they have no chance? Yeah, well, I, I, I think that despite the supermajorities um, and Governor Pritzker being a very progressive Democrat, the Democrats aren't going to want to um, pass all these things, $15 minimum wage, recreational marijuana, they're not going to want to do that without bipartisan support. So they definitely are still going to have to work together. With um, Tim Schneider, I did think that it was interesting um, because it was very clear, it was very partisan, and we hadn't heard that uh, throughout the entire day, speaking with all of you know the Republicans. We had Republicans on stage. We had Governor Rauner on stage last year. Who did not, who did not have a speaking part. Right. And didn't, uh, he, but he, he was still he wasn't sitting there. He was going to take questions, but he was there. I mean, in present. Were, somebody did catch him after near the end of the three hour thing. He and his wife seemed to have their eyes closed for a while, <laughs> yes, but I it did was see a that. long <laughs> ceremony <laughs> because we had long. all the statewide constitutional officers <laughs> giving speeches and getting sworn in, and there was a lot of singing before that. Go ahead. But it was different because, um, you you know, former Governor Pat Quinn was not at Governor Rauner's inauguration. There were, it was, it was, it just didn't feel right, you know, and, and on this inauguration, it felt like our lawmakers were coming together and they were going to work together. Tim Schneider's statement saying that he's going to hold the Democrats accountable because they're the reason for all of Illinois' issues, I don't think that speaks for the Republican Party. From what I've I've talked to anyway, the, the Republicans that are yeah. currently representing you know, us. I was almost just going to say, but he didn't mention Mike Madigan, but then I look at his statement he did. and he did. He did, he and said, Jamie and Pritzker. just a few short months ago, Pritzker broke with his party boss, Mike Madigan, when he promised to support legislative leadership term limits and an indes independent redistricting commission, but we didn't hear anything about them today. So <laughs> it was, mm -hmm. he, it, he was, it, it was actually the tone that Governor Rauner had set during the campaign mm -hmm which led, I don't know if it led, I think there were other factors including the unpopularity of President Trump in Illinois, but it led to a Pritzker win by just about 16 points. I think they saw it, that that, that yeah. didn't work. It didn't get them anywhere. Yeah. We, had, we had this massive budget impasse, this historical budget impasse, it, and it wasn't a fun time for lawmakers to be in office, so. Yeah, I, th I think, I mean, it will, one of the continuing stories as we move forward will be where does the Republican Party go? And we've talked about this all along since mm -hmm. since uh, they're very poor showing, particularly in Illinois in the November 6th election. And who funds them? Uh, and who funds Governor them? Rauner because Governor that. Rauner, mm -hmm. you know, had been pouring millions of dollars in mm -hmm. and seemed to n not be doing that so much. And then there are people, again, like former uh, State Representative Jeannie Ives, who ran against Governor Rauner mm -hmm. and came within three points in the primary last year, you know, has said the party must be true to its principles, move to the right on social as well as fiscal issues. And you're, you're hearing other voices saying, let's be the anti-tax party, the fiscal responsibility party, but go to the middle on some of these uh, other issues. And then even the Republicans in power are talking about a road program because we haven't had in Illinois a uh, road and bridge building and, and mass transit program, you know, the, a giant one for 10 years mm -hmm. because, um, you know, the legislature didn't do one under Rod Blagojevich. They did under Pat Quinn. They didn't trust Blagojevich. There was no trust between the governor and uh, the legislature when Bruce Rauner was in for the last four years. Mm -hmm. So he kept talking about a capital plan, but it never happened. Pritzker's talking about it, but will he be able to raise gasoline taxes or whatever? Now, he said during his inaugural address, you know, we're peop everybody wants government services, but you know, if you are going to demagogue against them, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, you know, if people use scare tactics right. against what we need to do to get government services, you know, there will be significant political will to bear, mm -hmm. which I think me, some people took as a threat, but I think it just meant, you know, if you have to make tough choices, everybody should understand that, and that seems to be where it's going, but we'll see what the Republicans do. For sure. I mean, Pritzker has said he wants a capital plan, and our lawmakers have said they want a capital plan, but when asked, okay, what, what's the plan? Do we have anything on the table? Do we have any conversations? Mm -hmm. I don't think anyone completely knows what they're going for yet. I know there was even some talk before the lame duck session that we might see a capital plan, that passed, no yeah, that, capital that, plan. Right, and that, so and that would have been kind of a, probably a gift to Republicans who said, oh, look at what those Democrats right. did before they left office, but that didn't happen because now it's gonna have to be something by the new legislature. And I did speak with Jordan Abadea, um, Pritzker's press secretary, just kind of hitting on th the key points, w uh, talking about the capital plan, and she mentioned that it's at the top of their list, but 
had no discussions yet. Right. So well, it, it's also funny it's that Governor, early, but former Governor Rauner, spent some millions of dollars, I think, attacking Governor Pritzker for having mentioned. He, he said he he proposed it, but he actually just mentioned it in talking to an editorial board. The idea of a mile vehicle mileage tax, mm -hmm. where you know they could, your car you could either write it down or there could be a tracking device to mm -hmm. say how much you've traveled, and then you pay a tax for that. That clearly, or seems to be off the table because Pritzker moved way back from that during the campaign. Uh, nobody seems to want that. And there's much more talk about how our gasoline tax hasn't been raised in about 20 years. So mm -hmm. um, we'll, as cars get more efficient and less miles, or you know, less gasoline is used per mile, so we'll see what happens. But weren't they going to try to put something in there too where those fuel efficient cars or the electric cars would have to be paying their paying fair some, share somehow that, too? I don't know how that's gonna be worked yeah, out, but and yeah. That, and that remains to be seen mm -hmm. as well because it depends how popular that becomes, but hey, there is a, They're using in the, the old too. Mitsubishi plant, is now there's a company called Rivian in Normal that's going to try to build electric vehicles, and if they don't use any gasoline, you know, where do you get <laughs> tax money to pay for the roads you're using? So we'll see what happens. Um, okay, Adriana, you're the yes. lucky one at the table. You mm. went to the state fairgrounds to see sure the, the uh, what did they call it, the inaugural? The inaugural ball, <laughs> I yeah. believe is what it was called, but... Bernie and I went home and slept. <laughs> you know, Dinner with we the wife. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> it was, I mean, it was something else. So mind you, taxpayers didn't fund this. Yeah, uh, it was all know, Pritzker. It was right? all Pritzker and mm -hmm. the man knows how to throw a party, let me tell you. But yeah, it was, it was something else. So we, I got there, I think about seven o'clock. The Pritzkers didn't make their appearance until nine o'clock. Um, lots of different food from around the state. And this was, in a building at, this was in a building at, at the state fairgrounds that was all decked out with chandeliers. It was beautiful. So beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And then I saw, I saw later the next day, saw a picture of, oh, this is what the building normally looks like. I was like, wow, yeah. this is... Was it the Exposition else? Center? Yes. I think, yes. Yep. Okay. So, so people know that from the state fairs where you go and buy all kinds of knickknacks and booths on all the various floors of it. And it was just completely redone from what yes, I understand. It was. It was. So. so what about, so in the morning there were rumors going around, the, the morning of money, <laughs> is Paul McCartney Paul coming? Paul McCartney, it, yeah, REO it, Speedwagon, we, yeah, we, this and that. So how did, so explain how things, and, and it ended up being Adam Levine, who is known to people who watch The Voice, <laughs> he's one of the judges, and Maroon 5, which has been around for a while. So how did this all kind of happen when yeah. you were there? So, I mean, a lot of us had speculated it was Maroon 5 hours beforehand, and they had some cover bands beforehand. The Pritzers come, they do their first dance, they dance a little more, and then there's another stage on the opposite side of the room. You hear some guitars, some drums, and all of a sudden the curtains come, and there's just Maroon 5. <laughs> All, half the people were like, "Who? What is happening?" And half the people go crazy, and you know they weren't—they didn't just play three songs. This was a full-blown concert. So, so you've been tired all week. I have been tired all week, but <laughs> you know, you never know. Yeah, right. Illinois and, is an interesting place. And this <laughs> is the band that I guess they're going to play the Super, Super Bowl. Bowl. The Super Bowl this year. Crazy. So. Um, from the state fairgrounds to the Super Bowl. So Good for them. <laughs> reporters being reporters, and I admit it wasn't <laughs> me, but at the press conference the next day where these pro-labor moves were being announced uh, by J.B. Pritzker, he was asked, I think a couple of times, how mm -hmm. much did that cost? Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, he just said, I just wanted people to have a good time, you know, get kick off the state in the right way. He did not give any hint what it was cost. I've seen some editorials or columns in various places. Oh, transparency. It, it is not government money. It's not government but, money. But we, and, and what's interesting about this, it's not corporate money either. I mean, other than whatever corporations JB owns, and he's supposed to be putting most of the things, his holdings behind some sort of trust situation, although mm -hmm. the Tribune did a big story, you know, questioning how mm -hmm. much is that. On the other hand, he's worth more than $3 billion, according to Forbes. So at most of the events like this in the past, you always see these big boards in various places. Uh, you see this at national political conventions and at inaugurations. All of the sponsors and many companies are asked to donate and donate 10,000 or 20,000 or 100,000 to help m make something like this go. In this case, for better or worse, Pritzker did it all himself. So there's nobody else is involved. You know, it's the governor and, and that's it. So I don't know if that's good or bad, but it is what it is. And even the tickets, they were $250 a piece and that money is not going to be seen by Pritzker. It's going to 
uh, Cabrini Green, and then also the to the State Fairgrounds, State Fairgrounds. Foundation, so, right? To to fix know, buildings like the Exposition he's, he's Center. He's not even getting that money back. And you right. know, if you threw a party, Bernie, I'm not going to question how much money that costs. So the man wants to throw a party. Yeah, keep waiting. Okay, um, <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see how it goes. Um, th there was something interesting that happened. Uh, I think it broke over last the, the weekend, just before uh, or, uh, the inauguration. But it did come out that uh, Governor Pritzker is. Uh, use it, setting up his own kind of LLC company to pay 20 of his top aides in the governor's office yeah. uh, extra money. Uh, for example, you mentioned Jordan, and she used to work for Channel 20. Mm -hmm. I, I hope none of her colleagues from Channel 20 are watching, but what was reported is she's going to make 75000 from the state and then an extra 75000 from this group. And it's like if her, his top people, uh, he is paying, I think, as much as like 130000 extra, saying... As Governor Rauner had said, you need to pay uh, good people significant salaries in order to lure them to state government, whereas there are some people who think if you're doing public service, then it's supposed to be a sacrifice. You can make your money later. And any thoughts on this, or have we heard any reaction to this? <laughs> and if not, or do um, you just want, a, want well, one of these jobs? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Are you hiring? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I think that we've seen a little um, pushback from some people kind of concerned about who are these people going to be loyal, loyal to, to right. right if you're if you know if you're loyal to this single person who's paying you more of your salary is that going to work out for the regular people here in Illinois so yeah well we'll, we'll see what happens the other part of that is whenever you work in the governor's office ask, you know, and I've seen a bunch mm -hmm. of them, you're always working for the governor. Right. You know that everything you do reflects on the governor. Um, it is interesting, you know, there's, there's a gift ban. I don't know if anybody will take this to court to mm -hmm. say, oh, you can't really do this because you're getting a benefit from a private source when you're in government. Um, but people who work for the governor always know they're accountable to the governor as well as the people of the state. Uh, we will see how this rolls out and, and what else happens next. But again, it does take some pressure off because Governor Rauner paid his people a lot more than Pat Quinn had paid, but that was, as far as we know, state, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm just talking about the state money that we know about, if there was anything else we don't know. Uh, so interesting times. Well, plenty to watch in coming weeks. Adriana Petrilli and Jacqueline Driscoll, thanks for joining me. I'm Bernie Schoenberg. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time on Capital View.